Welcome everyone. In today's video, I wanted to talk about Arbitrum, what it is and why it's important. So I'm very much a big proponent of layer two 2022. So this is the idea that TVL from alternative layer one chains, such as Avalanche, Polygon, BSC, it will come back to Ethereum, but it won't come back to Ethereum layer one. It will come back to Ethereum layer two. Now this is because you're still able to do all of your transactions, all of your DeFi stuff with Ethereum level security on layer two, but you'll also be paying extremely cheap fees in relation to using Ethereum layer one and also cheap fees in relation to using some of the alternative layer ones. For example, I think it's already cheaper to use Optimism than it is Avalanche. And so I expect some of the TVL to come back because the main use case for a lot of these alternative layer ones was the fact that it is cheaper. Now that it's cheaper to start using Ethereum layer twos, I think a lot of the TVL will come back. But in today's video, I just wanted to focus a little bit more on Arbitrum. Uh, so let's get into what Arbitrum is exactly. So Arbitrum is its own blockchain, but it derives its security from Ethereum. So rollups perform transaction execution outside layer one, and then the data is posted to a layer one where consensus is then reached. So that's um, Ethereum that they're talking about. So basically a user will come onto Arbitrum, they'll bridge their tokens over, do whatever transactions they need. And then those transactions are bundled up with other people's transactions. And then they're verified off chain. And then a proof of this verification is then posted to Ethereum layer one, where then consensus is then reached. And that's why they called rollups because your transactions and a bunch of other people's transactions are all rolled up together and then verified together. And so there are two different types, but in today's video, we're just going to talk about optimistic rollups as it pertains to Arbitrum. So what are some of the advantages that optimistic rollups provide? Well, they can offer up to 10 to 100 X improvements in scalability dependent on the transaction. So, you know, it's theorized that Arbitrum can reach, you know, tens of thousands TPS. It can definitely outscale some of the alternative layer one blockchains whilst also providing cheap fees and Ethereum level security, which is great. But there are some pros and cons to optimistic rollups, um, and this applies to Arbitrum as well. So one of the pros is that anything that you can do on Ethereum layer one, you can also do with optimistic rollups as it's EVM and Solidity compatible. So developers can just port over their dApps onto Arbitrum, onto Optimism with minimal tweaks and they'll you know work just fine. Uh, additionally, all transaction data is stored on the layer one chain, meaning, meaning it's secure and decentralized. So that's a problem with um, some of the you know, alternative layer ones is that they are not as secure, they are not as decentralized as Ethereum. And so you're really taking a risk with your funds when you're using those other chains. However, there are some concerns when actually using optimistic rollups. And one of those is long wait times for on-chain transactions due to potential fraud challenges. So if you want to get off of um, an optimistic rollup, it actually takes seven days if you take the official bridge. Obviously, you can bridge off different ways through um, protocols like Life Finance, Hop, Synapse. But if you want to take the official bridge, it takes seven days um, for dis any disputes to be settled. And also, an operator can influence transaction ordering. So this is MEV. MEV still exists on Arbitrum and Optimism, but it exists in, in a different way. And that's definitely one con. So with that out of the way, let's get into fees. How cheap is it to transact on Arbitrum? Well, if we take a look here, Arbitrum um, to send ETH, 40 cents, to swap tokens, 56 cents. Whereas on Ethereum layer one, it's $1.47 to send ETH and then $7.33 to swap tokens. And so you can see here, there is a massive improvement in the cost reduction when you're using Arbitrum and some of the other layer twos, it's even cheaper to actually start using. But fees are only gonna get cheaper with Arbitrum over time. So Arbitrum right now is throttled whilst it's in beta. So there are some security guards up and effectively that means that fees are actually not as cheap as they could be, um, but they are working to lower this in the future and you can expect within the next 8 to 12 months that fees are going to be significantly cheaper than what they currently are right now so Arbitrum will so Arbitrum will most likely make more improvements to cool data compression as well as the implementation of EIP 4844 which should massively reduce the costs um, associated with using rollups and 
the more people that actually go ahead and use rollups like Arbitrum, like Optimism, well, all of them, basically the cheaper it gets. Because all of those transactions are rolled up together and then verified off chain, the more people that get into that particular batch, the cheaper it is for each individual person, which is amazing. So the more people use it, the cheaper it gets. And basically that's gonna be a flywheel for Ethereum layer twos because it's gonna get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper as more people use it. And you still have Ethereum level security, which is amazing. So if you wanna go ahead and use Arbitrum, uh, you're gonna to need to add Arbitrum to your MetaMask. So you can go to rbscan.io. So this is effectively the Ether scan for Arbitrum. If you go to the bottom of the page, you can see add Arbitrum network here. If you just press that, it should come up and you can add it to your MetaMask. And so if you want to bridge funds over, you can obviously use the official Arbitrum bridge from Ethereum mainnet. But let's say you're on a different EVM chain where well, you can go to Life Finance. So Life Finance is a bridge aggregator. And so you can go from BSC, Gnosis, Polygon, Phantom, Moon River or Avalanche over to Arbitrum itself. So if I wanted to exchange one AVAX for ETH, you can see here there are multiple different options I could take. So um, I could take this route and that'll give me uh, $86, but it will cost me $2.59 and it will take me 21 minutes. Or if I want to do it really quickly, I can take this route instead and that will take me 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So in terms of dApps, if you go to portal.arbitrum.one, you can see all of the dApps that are currently live or are coming right now. So you have classics such as uh, one inch, Aave, and there are so obviously some new ones that are actually arbitrum specific as well so if you can just check through here and, and see what you might want to use of course you have like balancer badger barn bridge um and if we just keep going you can see yeah, cap finance is a new one that's uh, perpetual futures decks um we have Chainlink, of course is providing data cream curve has made it as well so yeah um, lots of different dApps that you can use and definitely go ahead and check out this website if you're interested in actually transacting on Arbitrum and using some of the DeFi there. I also have a video on my channel just going um, and doing a deeper dive into the Arbitrum ecosystem if you want to check that out as well. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Now just talking about Arbitrum generally, we can we can take a look at DeFi Llama. So these are all the dApps that have like actual significant TVL in them. We can see here that the uh, TVL for Arbitrum is $1.8 billion. And so you can see the growth here has been incredible, but about since November, it's kind of slowed down. And I think, you know, the total crypto market cap has like halved since then, but the TVL locked on Arbitrum hasn't, which signifies to me that people are actually going ahead and actually moving their funds over to Arbitrum and to other Ethereum layer twos as well. Because here's one fact that I think a lot of people don't really know, and that's that um, you're actually going to have to start to move to these Ethereum layer twos at one point or another, because it's gonna get way too expensive to transact on Ethereum layer one. Ethereum is already a whale chain anyway, but in the future, it's gonna cost thousands and the only people who are going to be able to survive on ethereum layer one are turbo whales and institutions have a scroll through here to look at some of the DeFi protocols they can use as well as the arbitrum one portal so that's it for today's video it's just a quick primer on what it is and why it's important and if there are any websites here that you wanted to visit later i'm going to leave the links to them in the description down below so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one